Welcome back to Our Justice Journey with Dr. Lawrence Wynn, part three, and we thank you for your continued interest in this discussion. I went to divinity school uh, to understand, uh, to, to, to be able to understand the faith of black folks in times of despair, right? Mm -hmm. And in education, I wanted to understand what was going on with our educational schools, the school system, and what were people saying? How did people write about it? It's always about social justice, improving the lives of others. It was always about that good fight. Yeah, yeah, that's deep. You know, it's always, it's interesting, you know, to just think like that was always your path and that's just really admirable, I would say. Um, our next question is, what are your hopes for your children in terms of social justice? My desire for them is to, to, to experience joy, to not have to feel the pressures of the earth. Mm -hmm. uh, ta Coates talks about this with his son uh, and trying to protect him from his son of like uh, what happened to Michael Brown. And mm -hmm. I never forget in reading uh, Between a World and Me and he's describing his son. And when the news is, comes out that the police officers won't be indicted for the death of Michael Brown, his son, uh, he would try to explain this to his son. And then there's a couple incidences in a book where they're in a movie theater and something happens. And it reminds me also of uh, Catcher in a Rye, Holden Caulfield, when he tries to protect his little sister of you know, this world. See, for my two sons, the unfortunate thing is that this year, they saw so much that has happened, yeah. right? And they also, my oldest son saw what happened with Trayvon Martin. Social justice is in them because they already know the work that I do as well as my, my wife uh, and, and trying to improve the lives of others when they see us reading, when they see us presenting, when they see us uh, having conversations about it. Social justice is part of their DNA. Whatever they decide to do, if it's art, if it's acting, if it's coding, they love coding, they want to be an engineer, they want to you know create different forms of Teslas and yeah. all that. They will be about social justice, and it may look different from the work that I do, mm -hmm. uh, but they know what a good fight is. They may, you know, support their local uh, school board members, or make a contribution or a donation to someone who's running for office, or uh, just, uh, you know, use their platform to do some something that's good. It doesn't have to look like what I'm doing. Uh, I want them to be able to fly and soar like an eagle in their own way, wherever they decide to live. Uh, you know, but at the same time, I want them to really uh, continue to fight because this fight will never end. Unfortunately, this is the world we live in. Mm -hmm. Yes, definitely. And I also think, you know, that point you said about, you know, just sustaining, you know, while kids are still children, you know, just like also like Black Joy is so important, you know. I think about Tamir Rice, he was 12 years old. And for like a 12 year old, like, I remember my brother, he was the same age as Tamir Rice, you know, just yes. to see that when you're coming up is just like, it almost, you know, it could just seem hopeless, you know? Mm -hmm. And what about the young brother in New York? And, you know, his dad is a mom of musicians and, you know, in a hotel and he's only 14 and a woman tries to take his phone and it's like, yeah. what is going on? She's accusing him, you know? And, and so uh, those are the things our kids are seeing they understand. And uh, it, it's, it's draining, it, it takes a lot. And it's like all the work we're doing for other folks, it starts in the house. Uh, it starts with the protecting, but I, I just want them to, in, in, to experience joy, just like any other, any other kid. Like when we lived in Madison, Wisconsin, some of our neighbors, age, they were running around with water guns. And mm -hmm. our son was only six at the time. And, he was like, he wanted a gun to run around. We're like, oh, no, you can't do that. And he's like, well, my friends, well, your friends are white. They can do that. They can run around. But you can't do it. And so here I am. I'm like, but he just wants to be a kid and run around on, you know, uh, squirt water at his friends. But here I am having this conversation about why you can't. And I'm, I just want to see that joy. And, and so... Um, unfortunately this fight that we have and yeah it is a fight uh yeah. it's 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 already starting such a so they getting it so young that they already know mm -hmm. what they're fighting against but it's not only fighting against but it's what you're fighting for mm. yes yes and so we're fighting for that black joy yes yes 
Um, just kind of going off your, um, what, how you just answered, you know, being an agent of change can be draining, even mm -hmm. sometimes when we feel like there's no hope. What do you do to relax and recenter and hope? Yeah, relax and recenter and hope. That's important. One, I like to run. I'm a runner. Mm -hmm. uh, so I like to go out and listen to my music. I used to run with no music uh, and just enjoy uh, just seeing, you know, the people out early in the morning, that air is cold, mm -hmm. uh, depending on the type of season. And then the music, I can play some old school music, you know, some grimy music, you know, mm -hmm. thinking about high school and be like, why am I listening to this? Uh, you know, so that's one way to, to, to relax, to get my mind right. Uh, and then also reading. Uh, I'm always, I get uh, my energy from reading uh, this and hearing, you know, the stories of folks who have come before. Uh, and so that's so important. And now, you know, meditation, uh, trying to meditate with, you know, uh, Chelsea, Dr. Chelsea Jackson, uh, meditate for peace. Uh, so that's all important. And then, of course, my faith, you know, prayer, uh, you know, uh, and just, just the last thing is spending time with my kids. And then our final question is, what's your message to the youth? Wow, my message to the youth. You know, uh, you are the future. Mm -hmm. You know, the work that we do, the work that you do, uh, it's all about you. That's that's 100. That's to be all about the truth. You are the future. Um, and we folks talk about the revolution. Folks talk about bold and courageous ideas. Folks talk about a good fight. It all start with the youth. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the reality is... Uh, you know, there's shoulders that you will stand on, but those shoulders are there because these folks do the work to make this world a better place for you. So you are the future uh, and just enjoy, have fun, be responsible uh, and always be true to yourself. Yes, yes, definitely. It's so important. Well, we thank you, Dr. Lawrence Wynn, once again, for being such an amazing contribution to this discussion and hope to continue connecting with you in the future. Thank you again to our listeners for being a part of this discussion as well. We hope that you enjoyed our podcast. Make sure to keep up to date with new stories and interviews in the near future.